Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for joining. We are going to wait just um, a couple minutes until we get a few more attendees. So um, hang tight. Thanks so much. Is that awkward Zoom time? Okay, well, it looks like we have some more people now. So now that we've stared at each other for a few minutes now, um, I will turn it over to Rep. Davids. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, so first of all, thank you all uh, for, for joining us today to uh, celebrate what I consider to be a, a pretty major win for patients and, uh, and consumers with the No Surprise Act. Uh, that went into went went into effect this last Saturday. Um, also, I want to thank the folks who um, are joining us uh, as um, uh, to to speak um, from their perspective about uh, the impacts that this bill um, and and legislation to address uh, a really important uh, issue um, are going to have. So uh, every everybody. Um, uh, I appreciate all of your time. I know you're you're busy doing a lot of things, living life, and also trying to help other folks get uh, access to healthcare. So, um, like I, you know, I I think I've said this quite a few different times, but healthcare is absolutely one of the top issues uh, that I hear about from uh, folks in in our community, and um, and of course it it feels that much more timely uh, because of the current COVID-19 um, crisis that we're, that we're uh, still in the midst of. You know, I, I know uh, people are struggling with healthcare costs, uh, premiums, prescription drugs. These are the kinds of things that uh, frankly keep people up at night worrying about whether or not they can make ends meet um, and stay healthy. And uh, I know I certainly have heard from a lot of folks, um, uh, a lot of Kansans who have shared their experiences about having an, an unexpected uh, or surprise medical bill, uh, sometimes af after what they thought was going to be a routine appointment, you know, I, I, I myself have uh, uh, received, um, in fact, just this year, I, uh, well, it's 2022 now, um, just recently, uh, you know, I got a, I got a bill that I was told wouldn't be more than $500. And then uh, ended up getting uh, uh, multiple times that um, in the in the mail uh, in terms of a bill. So you know, I think that um, these kinds of things, these unexpected expenses and surprise medical bills, often couldn't come at a worse time. You know, we're talking about uh, something like twenty percent of patients who visit an emergency room end up being treated by what is considered an out of out of network provider. And you know, during a medical emergency, the last thing that that you need is an expensive bill that you never saw coming. Um, you know, I've uh, I've I've hosted roundtables and other uh, ways for folks to reach out to our office. And uh, recently, at a roundtable, I asked folks in in the Kansas Third to send in stories about personal experiences with surprise medical billing. Um, you know, in the interest of of privacy, I won't share names, but. Uh, you know, I, I heard from someone who uh, was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer uh, a few years ago, and as part of their treatment, um, required getting a, a shot every so often to, to manage symptoms. And um, after just one shot in their doctor's office, they were hit with a $42,000 bill, which is, uh, it's inconceivable. 
Uh, and then um, another person who shared that they were uh, experiencing pain from a, a previous injury and went to a nearby emergency room for, for help and the ER observed them for a few hours and then sent them home. And, um, and then later come to find out the ER is at a network and they were hit with a, a massive bill um, depleting nearly their entire savings. And, um, you know, I mean, uh, hearing from somebody who had a, a suspicious mass, mass uh, biopsied uh, and as a, you know, as a precaution got this biopsy and received a $5,000 bill for something that took 20 minutes. So, um, you know, I, just, I think these kinds of stories um, are heartbreaking, but they're also like way too common. You know, we, we know that um, uh, uh, this can be devastating for folks. So um, to say that uh, this new uh, uh, bill that went into effect, this new law that went into effect offers protections that are vital is um, almost an understatement. You know, as, as of January 1st, um, these new uh, patient protections against surprise uh, medical billing have, have gone into effect. People are, you know, no longer going to have to worry about seeking an emergency, uh, seeking emergency medical attention and, and ending up with unexpected financial ruin. Uh, the new guidelines um, that we're talking about here are going to ban out of network billing for emergency services, uh, regardless of where those emergency services are given. Uh, people won't have to deal with the frustration of visiting an, an in-network facility and then unknowingly receiving and paying for care from an out-of-network provider, um, you know, like, like an anesthesiologist or uh, assistant surgeon. These are, um, these are critical protections, and, and they were uh, done in a bipartisan way. You know, this bipartisan legislation that I, that I voted for uh, uh, voted to pass after hearing so many of these kinds of stories um, and stories like the one we'll hear from uh, Heather today. Uh, this bipartisan bill was introduced um, and passed to prevent people from unknowingly seeking out of network care. Um, so, you know, insurance plans are now going to be required to, to keep uh, up to date lists of their in network providers for patients' use. And, um, you know, I think, I, I just think that this is uh, uh, an exciting uh, way to kick off the year to know that we're going to see the end of a lot of uh, harmful medical billing practices and um, that there'll be more peace of mind for, for patients. So, um, you know, I'm going to keep fighting to increase transparency and, and lower healthcare costs for folks. And um, I can, I'll, I'll stop now because uh, I want us to be able to hear from uh, Heather more about her experience and then and then we'll hear from our other panelists. Heather, go Thank ahead. you. <laughs> Thank you, Representative Davids. Good morning. Um, I welcome the opportunity to be able to tell a little bit about my own personal story. Uh, in September 2017, I was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer. I had a lot of worries at those at that time about what was ahead of me. And honestly, I thought that financial costs was not going to be one of them. I had a good job. I had full benefits, what I thought was a reasonable deductible. My husband and I had an emergency fund and we felt adequately that we could be adequately, um, would adequately cover those first, you know, we were told 18 months to two years that my treatment was going to take. What I found very soon is, or very quickly, is that I was quite naive about the costs of what my healthcare was going to be. What I didn't realize is that I would reach my plan out of pocket maximum every year for the next five years. And I expect to do it every year going forward for the rest of my life. Because the cancer had spread to my lymph nodes, I will always have annual ongoing testing to monitor for future cancer. And because my chemotherapy damaged my liver and the soft tissue of my gums, I have ongoing costs related to restorative care. All total, we ran through our emergency fund early into year two of my cancer treatment. We also depleted savings that were set aside for vacations and our kids' college fund. And we've taken penalty withdrawals from our retirement accounts to cover the cost of my medical care. I continued to work full time as much as I could during my treatment because I carried the medical insurance for our family. But when I exhausted my sick leave and short-term disability pay, my pay dropped to 60% of my regular salary while my family insurance premiums remain the same. 
So at a time when my expenses were ballooning, my income dropped to a point that could even cover our household expenses. The self-employed had no option but to take away time from his business to care for me and try to make plans. Our kids were only 13 and 14 when I was diagnosed, and it was an odd feeling when they became permit drivers and could show for me to medical appointments instead of the other way around. The cost of cancer has affected every decision our family has made for the last five years. I even scheduled my mastectomy over the kids' spring break so they could help with my care and my husband would Price medical bills are one of the things that added the greatest insult to injury because you think you've done everything right. You got an order for a test, scan, or lab at an in-network provider. You went to a hospital or location that your insurance contracts with. Then your blood, tissue, or film gets sent, read, or interpreted by a provider that gets filed to the insurance company, but is a doctor that you've never met. That individual is out of network or not contracted at that location. So the claim is denied and applied to a different out-of-network deductible or coinsurance level. Sadly, the statement you receive often just lists the facility name, such as ABC Pathology, and it says, please pay us $400 for your recent biopsy. But there's no detail about what the actual provider's name was for you to figure out what actually happened. The last thing that a cancer patient wants to do after the, all the hours of our lives that we lose driving to and from appointments waiting in lobbies and generally managing our care is then to have hours on the phone between provider offices, insurance customer service departments and an online provider directory trying to hunt through the Bermuda Triangle with, of information like Sherlock Holmes to find the place where you made the wrong turn. It has made the result of your, that has resulted in your claim being rejected. It is mentally exhausting and honestly pretty demoralizing. When Representative Davids asked me to share my personal story to, as part of the effort to pass the No Surprises Act, I wanted to help put a local face on the problem. I knew that I would do everything I could to advocate for others who were in this situation. Being financially devastated by medical bills doesn't just happen to the elderly, to those on Medicaid, to people who are unemployed. It happens and happens fast, even to those of us with good PPO plans, advanced college degrees, emergency funds, 401ks, and those who are living right here in Johnson County in the Kansas Third District. The No Surprises Act is one element that is that addresses one of the elements that is the most frustrating and least in the patient's control. But there are so many places that the system breaks down. This is a great first step, and I look forward to re working with Representative Davids and other elected leaders willing to tackle the wide range of problems so patients get to focus on fighting their disease and not their insurance company, because fighting the disease is the most important battle. Thank you for the opportunity to tell my story, and I'm going to hand it over to McLean at Health Forward Foundation to tell you a little bit more about how the No Surprises Act helps patients. Good morning. Uh, thank you all for the opportunity to speak. I uh, uh, know that I will not be able to put any of this any better than Heather or Representative Davids, but I appreciate the opportunity to speak on behalf of the Health Board Foundation. Um, we are very grateful um, for Congress having uh, not only enacted this bill, but also uh, now uh, having implemented it. Um, typically, Health Board Foundation is focused on the uninsured populations in Kansas and Missouri, and the ability of those folks to, ac those folks to access affordable quality care. Uh, but affordable health care is an issue for both the uninsured populations and uh, the insured populations. And while uh, there are protections against surprise bills for the Medicaid population until now, there weren't any protections for the insured. Surprise bills threaten the economic stability of individuals and families. Rising healthcare costs present a tremendous barrier to access to healthcare. And unforeseen costs cause individuals and families to make tough decisions on whether to pay their medical bills or other household bills, which can mean the difference between whether families eat or maintain safe housing or go into what can be thousands of dollars in debt. Many of us had the luxury of having extra money around for our bills, uh, to cover unanticipated costs when they come up, but there are many more of us who couldn't even cover a new car battery, much less an unexpected $1,000 medical bill when they arise. The No Surprises Act will go a long way to the needed transparency around medical billing and the ability of patients to budget and plan for their expenses. Again, we applaud Congress for taking this necessary step 
and encourage our policymakers to keep patients top of mind in all healthcare policy. And I'll turn it over to Brenda. Oh, Char okay. Sorry. <laughs> the, uh, the, I almost forgot my, my assignment. Uh, Brenda <laughs> is the, uh, the CEO and president at the REACH Healthcare Foundation. Thank you, McLean and um, Congresswoman Davids. We really want to thank you and applaud you and your colleagues and your, your bipartisan colleagues in Kansas, um, uh, in the Kansas and Missouri region and, and at the national level who worked so hard to get this bill passed. The REACH Foundation has been focused squarely on um, consumer experience uh, with healthcare and especially the uninsured as as uh, Health Forward Foundation for almost two decades now. And this is really exciting. Um, it's a very exciting first step. We think uh, the No Surprises Act and we really appreciate your, your leadership and the opportunity to speak with folks today. Um, you know, millions of Americans, including Kansans experience this as Heather so eloquently put it um, every day. It's the leading cause of bankruptcy in uh, the nation. And if you add up all other kinds of bankruptcy, even combined, it does not exceed that, which results in medical uh, in bankruptcy for most Kansans and, and across the country. And that's from receiving necessary care. It's not that people are just going to the ER willy nilly. These are necessary uh, procedures and um, experiences that folks are having. And, and they often get stuck with surprise bills that result in lots and lots of debt. A study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association just last year reported the cost of medical debt and collections is approximately $140 billion. And again, that's an amount larger than all other sources of debt in collections combined. The journal also noted that medical debt is more concentrated in the 12 states that have not expanded Medicaid, which includes Kansas. And so in Kansas, we have a double whammy situation there and uh, we need to rectify that. This isn't a new story. Multiple studies have documented the financial and emotional burdens of unpaid medical costs. In 2018, our foundation, the REACH Foundation, partnered with the Health Forward Foundation and other Kansas and Missouri foundations on a survey of consumer experiences and how they access healthcare. That survey found that a quarter of working age Kansas adults and a third of the state's children are living in households dealing with medical debt. The uninsured and the underinsured are at greatest risk of having medical bills they are unable to pay. People with large medical bills report difficulty paying for other expenses too, including food, housing, clothing, and utilities. And they are more likely to avoid seeking other needed care until it's too late, leading to even poorer health. So we think the No Surprises Act is a starting point to improve healthcare cost transparency for consumers, eliminate surprise billing, and ensure consumers have avenues for disputing costs when they um, do come up. While more work is needed to stabilize healthcare costs and educate consumers about these new protections, the REACH Foundation does support this legislation. And we thank, again, Congresswoman Davids for her consistent efforts to protect healthcare consumers. Thanks, Brenda. And I think um, now that we're, uh, thank you everybody for sharing uh, uh, a bit about your experiences and the work that you're doing um, to help address uh, what I, you know, what is a, a, a big part of the uh, broader picture when it comes to accessing uh, quality, affordable health care. Um, Zach, I think, are you going to run the, the yeah. question with this? Yeah, so we have um, a few minutes for a few questions if anyone has them about surprise medical billing or, or the No Surprises Act. Um, so feel free to, there should be a raise your hand function at the bottom of your screen. If you do have a question, click that and I will make sure to unmute you. I'm gonna wait just a little bit longer in case anyone thinks of anything. Well, Zach, it looks like um, we might not have uh, any questions coming in, but um, I will just kind of reiterate uh, that the 
um, that the no, no Surprises Act is going to be, uh, it's going to be really, really helpful um, getting patients out of the, um, out of the thick of negotiating uh, a, a surprise medical bill, uh, which I think is a, a really important function. And then, um, and then I'll just say thank you to our panelists today. Um, thank you to uh, McLean uh, and, and Brenda for the, the work you all are doing um, at your respective organizations. And Heather, um, thank you for coming on and sharing, um, uh, sharing a, a very personal experience um, with all of us. It, uh, it means a lot. So thank you all so much. I hope everybody has a good uh, rest of your day and um, a happy new year to everybody. All right. And if anyone needs any more information, I'm filling in for Ellie Turner this week. So definitely feel free to reach out. But thank you all for joining. Thank you for having us. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Bye.